What would you say is the scariest story I could tell you about knitting? Accidentally pulling on the wrong needle in a double pointed needle set and taking all of your stitches out. Accidentally dropping a stitch and not noticing until it's way too late. Making a mistake in a lace pattern that is super obvious and then you have to do lace surgery to fix it. For me this week it's having a deadline and unfortunately procrastinating too much to make it. So yes this is a Halloween themed video that is coming out in November. <laughs> Although I will say that the sweater that I knit this week I did manage to finish in time for Halloween so that I could wear it and be festive on that occasion. Occasion. While I was sitting and knitting away at this sweater last week, I had an idea for how I could use a very similar technique, but for making a spider sweater, which I thought was definitely Halloween appropriate. I really wanted to wear it on October 31st. I found this beautiful 1950s vintage knitting pattern for a spider sweater, although I personally prefer not to wear white knits that are skin tight because I find them to be a little bit see-through. So I decided to invert the colors so that the main background color would be black and the accent colors of the spider web and the spider itself would be white. There is also an extra twist at the end that I added to this sweater so you'll have to watch and see what I decided to do with that. I decided to start knitting this sweater with about a week to go to Halloween. And since I only had less than a week to knit this sweater, I knew that I had to make use of my wonderful knitting machine once again this week. If you're curious as to what a knitting machine is, maybe the history of it, and the one that I'm using here, then I can link you both in a card and the description below to the history of knitting machines video that I did a while ago. I love my flatbed machine and I'm really excited to use it to make this 1950s spider sweater. In contrast to my autumn leaves sweater that I made last week, this is not a sweater that is started with ribbing. It is still knit in pieces, so I have to make a front piece, a back piece, and two sleeve pieces, but this is done with a hung hem instead, which means that I want to start with scratch yarn, which is what you are seeing me cast on and knit with right now, until I switch over to my main yarn, and that leaves live stitches on the needles, which I can then hang later. Similarly to what I did last week, I also created a gauge swatch before starting to knit these pieces on my knitting machine in order to see how many stitches I needed with the yarn that I was using and the pattern. So the pattern originally called for casting on 144 stitches and I ended up casting on quite a few more because I was using a lace weight yarn from Knit Picks. So I needed a few more stitches to make the right size of sweater. Another slight design modification I decided to do was not to include the fly on the sweater, but just the spider, which is also why I'm calling this the spider sweater, because that's what takes me the longest in this process, and I was really a little bit crunched for time. As you saw at the beginning, I started this late in the evening one day after work, and I really didn't have a lot enough time to do all of the color work, so I only want to do the spider. Here you can see, by the way, how I hung the hem for my sweater, so you have two rows of live stitches because I folded under the original edge and caught it with the edge that I was working on and this way I don't need any ribbing and it won't roll up because it's stockinette stitch but because I have that rolled over hem or hung hem it won't cause me any problems. Here now you can see that I am showing you the little underarm piece for where I'm going to set in my sleeves and I'm at the point where I'm going to start the color work. Now this sweater is a little bit unique in that the color work is a little bit simple so the original bit of color works and that I'm working on right now is just three bands of the contrasting color that counts for the spider webs and the vertical bits of the spider webs are going to be uh, embroidered into the pattern at a later point. It is now exactly 10 o'clock 
and I have been at my knitting machine for an hour and 10 minutes and we have one sleeve off of the machine and it is looking fantastic if I don't say so. I really like this hung hem. It's very neat. It is slightly see-through so I think that when I wear this sweater I'm probably going to have to wear like a tank top or a slip of some kind underneath to make it a little less see-through, but yeah, one hour, 10 minutes for one sleeve. Hopefully I'll be back at my knitting machine tomorrow. So I will see you then. So yesterday, um, instead of knitting on my spider sweater, I did some procrastinating, how I like to call it, where I procrastinate other crafts by crafting in different crafts. And I made this crocheted half snood or snood. It's super cute and very functional. Today, why don't we get back to knitting on the vintage spider sweater. I think I'm gonna start with the other sleeve first. And once again, I will tell you exactly how long it's going to take me to do that. So I'll show you how long this whole process takes. <laughs> I now have two sleeves off of the machine, but that felt like such a close call. With the one with the live stitches, I just had a complete brain fart and forgot that I needed to cast off. Oh my gosh, I could have lost my entire piece, but thankfully I didn't. Each one took me a little bit over an hour, and now I have to move on to making the back panel and the front panel. I was considering which one I should do first, and I think the front panel is gonna be a little bit more difficult because of the spider uh, little color work piece. And at the moment, I think that I have the brain capacity maybe just to do the easier one. So that is the back piece for sure, rather than the front piece. I've already charted out the entirety of the instructions that I need to follow for each of the front piece and the back piece. Although we have to talk a little bit about how I'm exactly going to do that spider motif on the front, but we'll talk about it when we get there. All right, I might uh, grab myself, ooh, I think I'm gonna make myself a chai tea latte first get some sugar in me and a nice hot tea, and then I'm gonna start on the back piece. <laughs> is off of the machine. It's looking good if maybe a hint small. This tends to, I think, be the trend with what I'm making on the machine so far. Maybe I should air a little bit on the larger side, but hopefully it'll fit. We'll see. It took an hour and 25 minutes for the back panel. So I think my total time so far is between three and a half and four hours. I have the front panel left, which is probably going to take me a a little bit longer because I'm going to be doing the spider motif off of the machine. 
but I have an idea so I don't have to do the entire rose by hand for doing the color work on the spider, but only the spider by hand, if that makes sense. So I'll have to see if my idea works out. Maybe I should get started on the front panel and work up until the spider motif, and then I'll explain what I'm trying to do. I might work on that because it's, and I probably won't show you up until I get to that point because it's just, it's exactly the same as what I did for the back. Also, sorry if you hear that in the background, that's Nutella, she's having her dinner. <laughs> she's a bit loud. <laughs> she's a very enthusiastic eater. Probably see you tomorrow when I'm working on the spider portion and I'll explain to you what my plan is. It is T minus three days to Halloween and last night ended up being a bit of a disaster when I was working on the front panel. I ended up having to undo a whole lot of rows of work because the tension was just really off. I don't know what happened to make the tension so different. All the settings on my machine are the same. I also managed to drop a stitch so I've got that one kind of uh, held in place for now. It's a new day. I'm caffeinated. I sat down with my pattern and I did some calculations to figure out exactly where the spider piece is going to go because that's going to change because I have a different gauge so I have different stitch counts and everything and row counts. What was I talking about last night with the spider pattern? So if you remember from my autumn sweater, when it came to the color work portion, I didn't do it on the machine, I did it by hand. My machine can do color work and it I have done color work on it before. It's just that I don't have the, it runs off of punch cards and I don't have the punch card that lines up with the pattern. I do have the ability to make my own punch cards but I've never tried that out before. And unfortunately I don't really quite have enough time to do it. So I also have to do this portion of the color work by hand, the spider portion. However, I have 72 stitches on my machine right now that are teeny, teeny, tiny and the spider is 22 rows tall. That is so much knitting by hand for every row that it's going to take me forever. Long story short, I need to figure out a way to do the color work of the spider by hand, but only the spider bit and not the rest of the rows and do the rest of the rows just by machine. Here's what I'm thinking of doing. When I get to the first row of the spider color work, I'm going to put those stitches on hold on like a random piece of yarn or like a needle or something and let it hang below the machine and cast on new stitches above it. So basically it'll leave a slit in my sweater with live stitches at the bottom. I'm just going to continue knitting the rows above it as if I weren't doing color work, finish the rest of the front piece as the pattern states and then I'm going to, after I fully take it off the machine, I'm then going to have the live stitches at the bottom of where the spider pattern should be and I'm just going to knit that spider pattern by hand and kind of sew it and weave it in place. It'll be double thickness in the sweater there, but it actually might be nice because I'm gonna have some really long floats in the back and I won't have to worry about carrying floats because it'll be protected by the other row of knitting on the back of it. I'm hoping that sitting back down at the knitting machine today, I'm gonna to have less tension issues, but I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> the front piece is off of my machine. I think it looks really cute and really nice, but you can maybe see the same problem that I'm seeing, and that's the difference in the opacity between the top part and the bottom part, and that also solves the mystery of why the tension was so off, and it's because it's two different thicknesses of yarns. I accidentally switched to a thicker yarn, and honestly, at this point, I don't have the time to change it. I am just hoping that when I wear this, it's not quite so obvious. You can see this whole hole that I left. And now this hole here is where I'm going to work by hand to put the spider motif in. I have the live stitches on this spare yarn. I'm going to work the 22 rows of the pattern and then I'm going to figure out a way to hopefully seamlessly weave it into the background somehow. We'll see how that works. I do have all four pieces off of the machine. So I have a lot of ends. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be one big tangle. So I will see you when I'm done with the spider and sewing the front, back, and sleeves together. <laughs>
after I had stitched, maybe not so seamlessly, the spider in place, I sewed the sleeves front and back together and this created a flat working surface for me. This is exactly what the pattern wanted me to do and it then wanted me to embroider the vertical lines of the spider web. It wanted me to do it all the way around, but I honestly only had time for the front section. So I decided that if I wanted to at a later point, I could always do the sides and back or the sleeves and back. But for now, I was going to call it done and it was time to seam up the side seams and weave in all the ends and call the sweater finished. For those of you who have very astute observational skills, you might have noticed that there was some extra thread that I was knitting with when I was using the white yarn, and that was glow-in-the-dark thread. So yes, my spider and my spider web glow-in-the-dark, which I think is perfect for this spooky sweater. I really do like how the motif turned out, and I like the rolled over hem or the hung hem on this, especially after a good pressing. However, it is definitely too small. So if I want to use a knitting machine again in the future, I really need to work on my gauge swatch that and I really don't want to be rushing in the future I don't think it was very much fun I would much rather enjoy the knitting process also if you're wondering it's not a good idea to run a fog machine inside because here I set the fire alarms and off and I am panicking trying to get the air <laughs> clear <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you like videos like this, please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.